So we know that ionizing radiation used in medical imaging has the potential to affect and impact biological tissue. And these effects can be divided into two main categories, stochastic and deterministic effects. That one I've never heard before. Now you may or may not have heard of these two, but just to make it a bit easier to understand, stochastic effects are known as the probabilistic effects, and they involve random chance and the probability of biological damage increasing with the dose. It focuses on the risk of inducing certain long-term outcomes such as cancer and the hereditary changes that are passed on to the individual's future offspring. Whereas deterministic effects are generally described as non-probabilistic, since they occur after a certain threshold of dose, with their severity increasing as the dose increases. These directly affect the irradiated cells, which can result in symptoms such as skin reddening or in severe cases ulcerations. So in the next few minutes I'll be talking about these two effects, to understand how they relate to medical imaging, and the potential risks associated with radiation exposure. I don't know Eric, it seems risky. Let's start off with stochastic effects. These are associated with low dose radiation exposure. They occur randomly and without any threshold dose. And the probability of occurrence of these effects increases with dose. But the severity of these effects is not necessarily dose dependent. Meaning the higher the dose, the more likely these effects will happen. But how bad they are doesn't always depend on the amount of dose. Cancer induction and genetic mutations are examples of stochastic effects that can result from low dose radiation exposure. But the problem is that these effects can occur many, many years after the exposure, otherwise known as the latency period, which makes them very difficult, or dare I say, almost impossible to detect and attribute it to a specific cause. In medical imaging, the goal is simply to minimize the radiation dose to a patient while still obtaining high quality images, or rather one that is diagnostic meaning it's good enough to diagnose the condition of concern, but not so good that you can see unnecessarily good detail. And of course, we know this to be the ALARA principle, which is achieved using appropriate imaging techniques and optimizing the imaging parameters. Basically setting an exposure, a KVP and MAS combination that is appropriate for that examination and patient. And perhaps more importantly, trying your best to position the patient properly the first time so as to not require a repeat. Because the number one reason for saving patient dose isn't how well you've colored or positioned is not having to do that examination again. Now, according to the ICRP, the International Commission of Radiological Protection, cancer remains the largest risk following exposure to radiation, while the risk of radiation-associated hereditary effects isn't as high. When talking about stochastic effects, we should keep in mind the three following principles. First, that it's generally acceptable that there is no safe threshold of dose that has no effect, no matter how low. This way of thinking is referred to as the linear no threshold or the LNT model. I'll cover this in a dedicated video on its own, link down below once it's ready. But basically, it claims that even low levels of exposure carry a risk of inducing mutations leading to cancer and hereditary effects. Second, that the risk is proportional to the dose, which further highlights the importance of the ALARA principle. And third, that the damage to biological tissue, whether it be cancer induction or down the line hereditary effects, it can all result from the mutations occurring within a single cell following the exposure to radiation. So how long does it take for DNA damage to manifest itself? Well, the first thing is that unrepaired double-stranded breaks can occur following radiation exposure. These breaks can lead to chromosomal aberrations, which are just abnormalities in the structure or number of chromosomes. These chromosomal aberrations can lead to genetic mutations that are changes in DNA sequence that can result in altered genetic information. And finally, these genetic mutations may lead to cancer or hereditary changes, which are about the effects of exposure to an individual before the offspring has even been conceived. All right, now let's move on to deterministic effects. These are often associated with high dose radiation exposure. They occur when a certain threshold dose of ionizing radiation is exceeded. So quite literally the opposite of stochastic effects, which was more probabilistic in nature. The severity of the effects increases with the dose and the effects are usually predictable. Radiation-induced skin burns, hair loss, and cataracts are examples of deterministic effects that can occur with high doses of radiation exposure. These effects are usually acute, meaning fast-acting, and therefore can be detected shortly after the exposure. Having said that, there are two types of deterministic effects, early and late effects. Early effects generally result from a number of cells being killed or removed following irradiation or as an inflammatory response. These effects can occur within a few hours, which is actually quite fast in this context. And these can include things like skin reddening, hair loss, hyperpigmentation, desquamation, a fancy word for skin peeling, and intestinal epithelial cell loss. On the other hand, late effects occur over a period of months and years after irradiation. And these include things like vascular insufficiency, skin necrosis, telangiectasia, which refers to the dilation of small blood vessels, ulceration, and cataract formation. 
These effects can be the direct result of cell loss, damage or limited renewal, or may be secondary to adjacent post-irradiation changes such as the reduction in blood flow to the skin. Now when talking about deterministic effects, there are also three key principles to consider. First, that there's a threshold dose below which a clinically demonstrable effect will not occur, for example 2 mg. And these effects are just referring to the symptoms I mentioned earlier such as skin reddening. The level of effect is proportional to the radiation dose delivered, and that deterministic effects occur following a radiation of many cells. Now in medical imaging, it's important to balance the benefits and the potential risk of radiation exposure. And we all intuitively know this, but it's just one of those easier said than done things. While the risk of stochastic effects are difficult to quantify, the risk of deterministic effects can be minimized by following appropriate safety guidelines and using appropriate protective equipment. And not to forget the exposures that we use, which we often seem to forget about since we have AEC. Now this is an important one and I've made two other videos on it, so if you need help understanding and memorizing your exposures, I've provided links down below to those. All right, so what do we learn? Well, stochastic and deterministic effects are important concepts in medical imaging. Stochastic effects are associated with low dose exposures and occur randomly, while deterministic effects are associated with high dose radiation exposure and is usually predictable after a certain dose threshold. Pretty simple, right? Now in the next video, I'm gonna be covering the linear no threshold model, which is particularly relevant to the stochastic effects I mentioned earlier. So be sure to click here to watch that and I'll see you there. Stay curious.